In this video you will learn about the factors that are important to look at when we want to design a comfortable, healthy home where the well-being of people is guaranteed. My name is Luc Willekens. I'm an architect and medical doctor. I work as a teacher and researcher in Delft, the Netherlands. My field of research is the influence of architecture on people's well-being, especially in care facilities. First, I'll discuss with you the general relation between health and architecture, then the specific health-promoting factors in housing. The definition by the World Health Organization is health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. To be able to talk about health-promoting architecture in housing, it's good to look at our definition of health. There's more in this definition than just the absence of a disease. As you can see at the infographic, physical, mental and social components play a very important role in feeling healthy, having a feeling of well-being. This is an overview of how the different fields of research are delivering the elements important to promote health and well-being in healthcare as well as in housing. This is an overview of most of the design factors found in research as well as practical experience to get a good design. First, we'll discuss the physical elements. The shelter. First of all, a house should protect us against rain, wind, cold and heat. From the beginning of the ages, human beings have made their shelters. Up to now, where we even have complex systems providing lots of comfort. Safe. Our house should be safe for people to move and do daily activities, especially in the kitchen and the bathroom. Secure. To feel at home, people have to feel secure. A lock on the door, contact with the neighbors. By using special materials and form, the architect also has the possibility to express this comfort of safety and comfort. Comfortable. To feel comfortable, the house has to have enough day daylight at the right places, enough ventilation, especially at the toilet, bathroom and kitchen, as well as possibilities to heat or cool spaces. Now we go back to the overview and start on the mental and social elements. Culture. The interior design of the house depends largely on the culture of its inhabitants, as well as the design style of the moment in that culture. Here you see the examples of the old Dutch interior, a Japanese interior and a modernistic one. Personal memories. Our interiors are full of personal memories, photographs, furniture inherited from parents or other family and friends. There are as many styles of interiors as there are people. All these factors all together look easy to understand and wise to use in the design of the house. All the factors together make the process of design altogether complex. All that is the challenge for today's designers. To provide in a design that is a good shelter, safe and secure, without taking away personal styles and objects, so people feel comfortable and at home. 